Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a look at rotational units in mechanics. We have the linear units that we're familiar with for distance, velocity, and acceleration. So we have meters, meters per second, and meters per second squared. But what if we want to explain the motion of something that's rotating about a central point, like an object going around in a circle? Well, the angular or rotational distance is measured in radians. We use the variable theta, or any angle symbol, but theta is typical, and radian is actually a non-unit. We just simply write it so that we have something to reference, but actually it's not really a unit. That's evident when we start talking about angular velocity. Angular velocity, we use the symbol omega, and the units are radians per second, but in essence, we should write one over second. I typically put the word radian or RAD to indicate radian in there so that we have a reference, but again, angles measured in radians are simply non-units in the grand scheme of keeping units. Angular acceleration, we use the symbol alpha, the Greek letter alpha, and the units are radians per second squared. Again, that's the same thing as writing one over second squared, but putting in the word radian does make sense because it gives you the reference. There's a few other things that will uh, come in contact with when we deal with rotational motion, the concept of moment of inertia. It is the mass equivalent in rotational motion. In linear motion, you think of mass. In rotational motion, you think of moment of inertia I, which is equal to the product of the mass of the object times R squared, or depending upon how the mass is distributed, you may have a constant in front of that. But the units we use are indeed the product of mass, which is kilograms, times distance squared, which is meters squared. So these are the rotational equivalent units for mass, kilogram meters squared. Angular momentum is momentum in an angular sense, rotational sense. In linear units, we have momentum being equal to mass times velocity. In this case, we have moment of inertia instead of mass and angular velocity instead of linear velocity. The units in this case are for angle momentum, we end up with kilogram meter squared, and angular velocity is one over seconds. So we multiply this times one over seconds. So we end up with the units of kilogram meter squared per second for angular momentum as opposed to linear momentum. And also the equivalent to F equals MA in linear motion we have torque equals I alpha. Let me write that down. So for linear motion, we use F equals MA to work out a lot of problems. And in rotational motion, we use torque is equal to I times alpha. So instead of force, we apply a torque. Instead of mass, we have moment of inertia. Instead of linear acceleration, we have angular acceleration. So the concept of torque is equal to force times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the point of rotation. It can also be written in terms of vectors. So here we have torque is equal to the cross product of the point to where the force is acting times the force. So this is typically also called the moment arm. The unit for that is newtons times meters. And of course, if we break that down, newtons is kilogram meter per second squared times meters. So this ends up being the units of kilograms, meters squared per second squared. So these are the units of angle or of, of torque, not angular momentum, but of torque. And of course, if we use the vector notation, then we use the right hand rule and the torque will be perpendicular to the plane in which the force is acting. So those are the units that we are that we encounter when we deal with rotational motion or sometimes also called angular motion. That's how it's done. A little rusty.